Today I'd like to talk to you about uniform random variables, which are random variables where the probability is spread out over the region that we're interested in as widely as possible. As always, let's begin with the story. Building costs for a new castle continued to spiral out of control. The architect was currently modeling the expenditures as uniform over the interval from 3,000 to 5,000 gold pieces. What is the chance the effort would cost at least 4,500 gold pieces? The distributions of the form DN are a special case of distribution called uniform. Recall that the counting measure of a set A is the number of elements in the set A. So for instance, the counting measure of ABC would be three. With this notation, the general uniform measure over a finite set is as follows. For a finite set A, say that X has uniform measure over A, if for all little a, the probability that x equals little a is one over the number of elements in a times the indicator that little a is in big A. And we write x has distribution uniform over a. Now the indicator is essential to the uniform. From the indicator that little a is in big A, it is possible to find the normalizing constant the size of A inverted. But knowing the size of A is not enough information to recover the indicator that little a is in big A. So it is the indicator part that is the most important in the uniform distribution. This looks as follows. For a finite set A, if X has distribution uniform over A, then the probability that X lands in any particular set B will be the counting measure of A intersect B divided by the counting measure of A. Now in the above definition, writing A, B together or A and the intersection symbol of B refers to the intersection of these two sets. Now the intersection consists of elements that are in both A and B, so it is analogous to logical AND. In fact, the intersection of two sets A and B is defined as X is an element of A intersect B means that X is an element of A and X is an element of B. Like logical and, a comma can be used to indicate intersection of set, or one can simply write the two sets one after the other. Since logical and commutes, so does intersection. So for any two sets A and B, the intersection of A and B is the same as the intersection of B and A. Another useful fact about intersections that will be used extensively is that an intersection of a set with itself is just the original set. In other words, for any set A, the intersection of A and A equals A. This holds because for any logical statement S, it holds that S and S equals S. So for any set A, X in A intersect A is the same as X in A and X in A, which is the same as X in A. So the sets A and A intersect A are identical. Note that this formula looks a lot like our conditional probability formula. Consider the following example. Suppose that X is a D6. So it's a roll of a fair six-sided die. Then the probability that X is either two or five is the counting measure of the set two five intersected with the set one, two, three, four, five, six, divided by the number of elements in one, two, three, four, five, six, which is two over six or 0.3333 repeating. For a natural number N that's positive, so one, two, three, et cetera, DN is just another name for the distribution that's uniform over the set of integers from one up to N. Suppose that there were 73 animal traps placed on a factory grounds, of which four of those traps had animals trapped inside. If a trap is inspected uniformly at random, what is the chance that the trap contains a trapped animal? Well, let's let A be little a1, little a2, little a3, little a4 be the numbers of the traps that contain animals. We don't know whether some of the traps are more likely to capture animals or less likely. 
But for x uniform from 1 up to 73, the question is asking, what is the probability that x is in A? Now, because x is uniform and A is a subset of the numbers from 1 up through 73, this is just the size of the set A divided by the size of the set from 1 to 73, or about 0 0.05479. Note that only the size of A matters here not the values of the actual traps that contain the animals. Now, the discrete uniform distribution can be thought of as the probability version of counting measure. What if a different measure is used? Well, Lebesgue measure can be thought of as length in one dimension, area in two dimensions, volume in three dimensions, and so on. Suppose that we use Leb to denote Lebesgue measure the same way we use the number sign to denote counting measure. The following are some examples of Lebesgue measure. The set A that runs from four up to seven is a one-dimensional thing that has Lebesgue measure seven minus four or three. The triangle B that runs between vertices four zero, seven zero, and seven one is a triangle of height one and base three. And so it has area one-half times three, or 1.5. Now, the continuous uniform distribution can be thought of as the probability version of Lebesgue measure, where each set B is assigned probability proportional to the Lebesgue measure of its intersection with A. For a set A with Lebesgue measure greater than zero, we're going to say that the random variable X is uniform over A if the probability that X is in B is the Lebesgue measure of A intersect B divided by the Lebesgue measure of A. In one dimension, this reduces to the following. For a non-empty finite interval from A up to B, we say that X has uniform measure over A to B. If for all C and D that lie between A and B, the probability that X falls in the interval from C to D is the length of the interval from C to D, which is D minus C, divided by the length of the interval from A to B, which is B minus A. And we write X is distributed uniformly over the closed interval from A to B. If we're talking about the continuous uniform over the interval from zero to one, this is the standard uniform. So if we have X distributed uniformly over the closed interval from zero to one, then say that X is a standard uniform. Now, one of the nice things about uniform distributions is whether you are working with discrete or continuous uniforms, they all have certain properties in common. Suppose that X is uniform over A. Then the probability that X falls in A will equal one. And the probability that X falls in B will be the same as the probability that X is in both A and B. So we don't have to worry about the parts of B that lie outside of the set A. All we have to do is worry about the parts of B that intersect A. Now, the reason for that is if we let M be a measure, either counting measure if A is finite, Lebesgue measure if the Lebesgue measure of A is greater than zero, then the probability that X falls in A is just going to be the measure of A intersect A, which we've said is just the measure of A divided by the measure of A, so we get one. And for the second part, the probability that X is in B is just going to be the measure of AB divided by A, which is going to be the measure of AAB divided by the measure of A. And that's exactly how we find the probability that X is in A intersect B. Notice for both parts of that proof, we use the fact that the intersection of A with itself is just the set A. The final fact about uniforms that I want to talk about is that conditioning on the value of the uniform leaves a new uniform random variable. So if I have a random variable x, which is uniform over a, and then I condition on x falling in the set b, the resulting random variable will be uniform over a intersect b. The proof works as follows. Let A, B, and C be measurable sets where the probability that X falls in B is greater than zero. 
then the probability of x falling in C, given that x fell in B, is the probability that both x falls in C and x falls in B, divided by the probability that x falls in B. By definition of the uniform, this is the probability that x falls in A, B, and C, and the probability that x falls in B is the measure of A and B divided by the measure of A. Now, the probability x falls in A, B, C is the measure of A, B, C divided by the measure of A. And now we have a measure of A in the denominator of both the numerator and denominator, so it cancels, leaving the measure of A, B, C divided by the measure of B. But that's just the probability that a random variable uniform over A intersect B falls into C, and so we are done. As an example, suppose that I roll a fair 10-sided die and notice that the number is less than or equal to 8, and ask, what is the distribution now? Well, if I start with a number from 1 up to 10 integers and look at the intersection of the numbers from 1 up to 8, I just get the integers from 1 up to 8. So x conditioned on x being an integer from 1 up to 8 is the same as uniform over the integers from 1 up to 8. In other words, it's the same as a die roll on a fair eight-sided die. Now in the story, we said that the cost was uniform over the interval from 3,000 to, to 5,000. And the question was asking, what's the probability that the cost is at least 4,500? Now, the probability of the cost is at least 4,500, written using interval notation, is that's the closed interval, or I should say half open interval, from 4,500 up to infinity. Remember that we can always take the intersection of that with the set from 3,000 to 5,000 that C is uniform over. That intersection is the interval from 4,500 up to 5,000. And so we end up with the length of that interval, 500, divided by the length of the interval that we are being uniform over, which is 2,000. And so our final answer is 25%. So that's how uniform random variables work. When you condition on a uniform being in a certain area, the result is yet another uniform. That makes these variables both ubiquitous and powerful. See you next time.